Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 300 for Monday, April 19th, 2021. Folks, and welcome to or welcome back to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here back in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Napoma, California, it's Paul Kent. How are you today, Mr. Kent? Happy 300, Dave. I know. It's freaking amazing, isn't it? Our little weekly conversations have really turned into a thing. They've become a thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. I look, it, you know, obviously we've done 100 and we've done 200 because that's sort of necessary when you're incrementing by one and and then you get to 300. But for some reason saying gig gab 300 like that, it feels like that hit that had more of an emotional resonance with me than, than 200 or 100. And I'm not sure why uh, well, we've covered a lot of ground over years and you know, like 100 was kind of a milestone. Sure. 200 was an incremental milestone where 300 is like, we've been doing this for a while now, yeah. you know, got to talk to cool musicians all over the world, you know, had some cool guests on for interviews and, you know, we've done a lot of stuff. And, you know, for those people who haven't been with us for the whole journey here, this started out as Dave and I, who live on different sides of the U.S. coast, Dave on the East Coast, I'm on the West Coast, but we had a, a mutual work relationship where we would see each other and talk to each other and play music together through that work relationship. It turned into, we used to just talk to each other about what's going on in our musical lives and it was like, hey, you know, like, it's like that Seinfeld thing. This could be a show. This could be a this show. Be a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, you guys uh, have been great company to us listening in as we've been doing this for, this is five plus years. I think it's, it's just, six. I think it's six plus years, which technically years. five plus is also correct. But. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, you know, it's fun. You know, it's been uh, therapy for me, you know, oftentimes when I'm trying to figure out how to solve uh, organizational problem or a booking problem, you know, yeah. sometimes we put it out into the world and we get some great stuff back. We've covered a lot of cool technical tips. We talk about gear. We talk about songs. We talk about bandmates. We talk about, you know, pretty much everything that's in the life of a, of a, you know, semi-professional, professional musician. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. We've, we've talked about a lot of cool things and I really value, you know, I look forward to it every week that we just get to touch base and, you know, that other people out in the world, seem to like it. So I'm up for another 300 if you are. I'm in. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah. I, it may be the reason 300 feels maybe one of the reasons 300 feels as, as, as emotional as it does is of course the last year has been perhaps the, the least predictable year we could have ever had. And I could stop right there, but I'll say as musicians, um, you know, where, where we all were like sort of shoved into a very similar boat. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking of though, the, em the empathy ahead. has oh. been wonderful. The empathy, the empathy has, empathy. yes, that's it. Right. We're <laughs> all in this. We always knew we were all in this together and that's sort of been our vibe anyway. But, but the last year has very much been about that for sure. Sustaining. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. yeah, man. So you played some gigs though, right? You've, you've been since the last time we chatted about gigs. Yeah. Life is, life is starting to show hints of normal. So I've had some acoustic gigs. I've started to get some work down in this new area that I've moved to, which is kind of nice. Um, and the difference is, you know, like like when you move to a new scene, like some people are really good at just moving in and, and you know, they just apply whatever has been successful for them in the, in the past and they work their way into a scene. They meet sure. musicians, they find a new band. You've done this several times, right? I have. I I. I am experienced at it. I won't say that I'm good at it, although I've been successful at it. So maybe my own interpretation of my success is, uh, is understated, but, but well, it's I mean, never comfortable. Always gotten a gig. I've always yeah, yeah. gotten a gig, but it's like, yeah, yeah. it's never been, I, well, there have been each time there have been those moments where it's like you get, I get there. I get, you know, get my life settled, whatever that means, get moved in life settled takes longer than that, but get moved in, start, you know, meeting people, start putting out feelers. And then there's that point and it's happened every time where it's like, crap, I, you know, still haven't found people to play with. Mm -hmm. Like what's going to happen? Crap. Like, Oh no. And, and then 
what I've done every time is I've just gone into the woodshed and it's like, okay, the, the most important thing is that I keep playing. And so I would just keep playing. And as soon as I sort of made that decision, I would often have like a week or two would I would, I would ignore my drums and like, just not do anything musical sort of waiting for the phone to ring, so to speak. And I'd be like, Nope, I got to take, take the reins here and I'm just going to start playing. And as soon as I do that, it feels like that's when the phone starts to ring. It's like, like somehow pe the universe knows like, okay, all right, you're still going to do this. All right, great. Let's, let's, let's get you a gig. So, yeah. Uh, so the complication for me was moving during a pandemic. So yeah. the ability to kind of get out and mingle and meet some people. So yeah, you know, I got down here and things were, things were, nothing was happening when I first got down here. Right. I mean, everybody was really locked down. Of course. You know, after yeah. The move. But I did have a couple of mutual friends and I did have um, a couple of friends who knew people in this area and made a couple of, and then I'm, you know, I'm a pretty decent networking guy. And so I reached out to who I figured out were, you know, some of the better players around here who were getting gigs and, you know, who I'd seen there. I did a little bit of homework. So, you know, I just reached out and started making some connections. And then, you know, I'm a pretty fearless marketer also. So I just started, you know, once we moved a little bit farther along, you know, where things weren't locked down and gigs were starting to appear again, put together a new press kit and said, you know, sent out messages. Hey, I'm a new musician in the area looking to get started. And, uh, you know, here's my demo and here's, you know, what I do and here's where I've been. And, and, you know, the phone rang a couple of times and, you know, I started getting some gigs. I have <clears throat> two gigs about 45 minutes south of me. And I had, mm. I've had one really good gig about 45 minutes north of me. And then I played at a, a local restaurant here about 10 minutes away. And that's about, that's, you know, in Pismo Beach. Yeah. And so starting to get a little bit of there there, which has been really rewarding. And, you know, it, it builds upon itself. So once you get a little bit of cred, once you get a little bit of, you know, proof that you're hireable, that makes the next one even easier. And so that's going along. I, 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 you know, my friend Mel, who's my buddy, who yeah. one of the reasons we moved down here, um, mm. he, I told you he, he's picked up drums and, uh, he's put together a little band. We get together once a week. It's been really nice to play, you know, just turn it up a little bit. And one of the guys who's invited is a guy who's a working musician down here. So through him, I've gotten to know a few things. And actually that guy, David, is actually who um, got me the gig at the at the restaurant. So Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So there you just, go. It's just yeah. playing the angles, right? It's just, you know, trying to create a compelling story and, and telling the story over and over, over again. But then I went back up to where I live. So I, I'm now about three hours away from where I used to be, but I still have a pretty vibrant gig schedule up there. Got it. And I went up and I did one and it was my first one. And it was so nice. A lot of people came out. My all time record tip day was one thing that happened and um, ah. beautiful day seeing old friends. And I got a little bit of, you know, I got a little verklempt that, you know, maybe this whole master plan that I'll be able to keep my gig life up there on a, on a kind of a fixed schedule sure. and also start to build something down here and have the best of both worlds that that might be able to come true. So I'm going back up to the Bay area this weekend and the following weekend for gigs. Um, things are slowly starting to return to normal, more solo and duo stuff, not a lot of band stuff. Although the house rockers did book our first our return gig is going to be June 25th. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'll talk, right. yeah, I'll talk about that a little later in the show, but, okay. um, but yeah, you know, so acoustic gigs are going good. Um, one thing I'll, I'll kind of put a bug in your, I, I uh, upgraded my Bose system for my solo gigs and I'm really, really happy with this I, new. I was going to ask that you, that's the one you talked about a couple of weeks ago, right? The um, whatever. I, yeah. I, so this is my third iteration the, the, of those the, things. So the Pro the 16 or whatever. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. I had the original iteration, uh, I used, I actually put that up at Mel's house and we used that as a little small PA for his band. Sure. Um, I had the second generation. Simon bought that from me and he's loving that. So he's getting the benefit of a little bit less stuff to carry than he, he typically had. And, you know, the sound, I still think the sound is remarkably crisp and clear out of those things. Sure. And now I bought the third one. So again, it's a, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit less to carry. Um, and, uh, you know, sets up in a minute and, uh, and I just love it. So, that's been a real good thing. We should probably do a little deep dive on these these uh, solo performer PAs because there's a few good ones out there now, and the market is getting a little better. But Bose, I think, kind of started that. Bo that Bose uh, certainly started the the prosumer version of yeah. the the you know portable line array. Let's call it right because that's essentially yeah. what these are. I, I don't know if line array is the right because the line is different. That's what they call them. But I guess it is a line array. It's just a horizontal line. And they're a vertical line instead of a horizontal line. But yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
No, they, yeah, those things, all of them are, that I've used are great. And they, they, you know, Mackie's got their reach, which is um, yep. a little bit, I've got one of those here that we've used and it's so versatile because not only it, 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 the reach you would put on a stand or tabletop or something like that, but it's built to be put on a stand and it does the, the reach thing, right. Where it, you know, like, like all line arrays, it sends the sound in lots of directions, but this one also has um, high end speakers, tweeters on either side of it to be used as monitors. So mm. you could have it next to you, right? Pushing sound out toward the crowd, kind of at the front of stage, and then the speakers aiming to the side. Uh, and you can have either or both of them on, depending on, you know, how you're situated or whatever. And it like that works out really well because you get the low end sort of resonating out of the thing anyway. But to have that directional high end pointed at you works really well. And like I said, I've used it for acoustic gigs, solo yeah. duo things. Also, I've used it for live band scenarios. It works well as a stage wash or. Now, these or, are great. This is great technology. They yeah. fill the room like the Bose one, you know, because of the array uh, and the science behind the array. It literally I have the middle of the th they were just released three of them. Yeah. Um, and I have the middle level because that's about the size rooms that I typically sure, play. Sure. And it, it literally fills the room and at 180 degrees. So, exactly. so yeah. I can put it next to me and have totally clear sound. Um, it, it, they're, they're, it's great. Another piece of gear that I, that I bought recently is, um, a Shure SM7B microphone, which is probably more usually known for, as a broadcast mic. I was going to say, you should start using it for the show. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's I a lot of podcasters that use the SM7B. Yeah. Beautiful. But I just really like the richness of the sound. And so I've been using that um, for my live vocals as well. Mm. Sounds great. It, it very low output mic. And so you have to buy one yeah. of these cloud lifter things. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. You need, you need a board with true 60 dB of gain, or you need a FET head or a cloud lifter. Um, yeah. like, like those new and old Mackie Onyx boards. Cause I, cause I have the same problem with, with podcasting, right. Is I've got you know, I use, I don't use a 7B, but I use a high LPR 40. Same problem. It's a large diaphragm dynamic mic. So it needs lots and lots of gain. And uh, I started with the Mackie, the old first gen Mackie Onyx mixer. And it, I didn't realize how good I had it because that had true 60 dB of gain. And it was like, oh, this is great. Then when I had to move to the Behringer mixer that I used once the, um, once I needed to move to USB, uh, I was like, wait, what happened to all my, where's my headroom? What happened? <laughs> Thankfully the, the personas, uh, the quantum 2626, which is what I'm using as my Thunderbolt interface. Now that's got a ton of gain, but, um, and the, the new Mackie Onyx mixers do too, but, but yeah, the cloud lifter or the FET head. So those are, these are little inline devices, folks that, uh, you send normally, normally with a dynamic mic, you don't, they don't use phantom power, but a FET head or a cloud lifter you, they, they go in line. So you put them XLR, you know, from the mic to the cloud lifter and then XLR from the cloud lifter into the board and you send phantom power down the cloud lifter takes it and boosts up your gain so that you've got more headroom to work with coming from the mic. And the same is true of the FET head They're, They both basically serve the same purpose. So are you using, I assume you're using a cloud lifter with your, um, with your mixer. You have to, you have to, well, I don't use a mixer. Actually, that's one of the nice things oh, about this. With the um, Bose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it basically has a three channel mixer. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and then it has all of the um, tone match technology that, so you can actually buy a, an app, you know, pick the settings you want for each of the channels. Sure. One channel for mic, one channel for instrument. And then the third channel is you know, kind of more for um, like, if you're going to play between set music, if you're going to attach something, it's not a, it's not a full input. It's just a, right. an input for those oh, sorts of things. So I see. Can you Bluetooth to it as well? If you yeah. wanted to go that route? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Really that's, super handy. That's great. So the app to control, and you can actually do your mix on a blue, on this app, right? which is, which communicates by Bluetooth. So it's pretty freaking awesome. That's great. That's cool. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, curious about this seven B though. How it, have you had it in an environment where feedback would normally be something you'd have to worry about? And, and um, yeah. And, and it, does just, it do okay? Like with, with feedback and stuff? Um, so I only have one case. And so I would say that the Bose was directly behind me mm -hmm. 10 to 12 feet. Okay. So, and so, you know, there's the microphone and then me, and then, you know, 
and then the bows. And, and so I was playing to a pretty large lawn area, uh, you know, probably about 200 people and, um, and, uh, no, not even a hint, you know, more, more, if I move my body out of the way, feedback to the acoustic guitar is more of a problem, but. Oh, um, interesting. Huh? That's yeah, okay. Nothing with the SM7B. Yeah. That's great then. All right. Rock that's solid. good. Yeah. I've never used one of those in a, in a live performance environment. Um, so such a beautiful, rich sound. It is really a gorgeous mic. Yeah. And that's the trick, right? Is, is finding a mic that fits your voice or your instrument, what, you know, yeah. whatever the case may be, but your voice is your instrument. So the mic that works for you might not be the mic that works for me. And, you know, and it's just, you got to test them out. And when you find the one, then it's like, okay, I'm going to buy four of these. <laughs> like, good to go. <laughs> yeah. Like people tell me, I, 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 People say, oh, you're a great singer. I'm like, no, no, I can sing in tune and I have chosen a microphone that works for my voice. Like these are the two things that I know about. Well, it's either microphone or a great front of house sound guy who's who's adjusting for your voice through that mic in that room. Sure, right? sure. So my buddy Michael the wrong, Bryan. The wrong mic is the wrong mic. I, I don't care who's doing front of house. You know, you can fix it in the mix sort of, but you really should start with a mic that's good for your voice or, or whatever. I, I agree. Yeah. But, but largely what you have is kind of like more like, there are a lot of beta 58s and a lot of SM 57s out there that are likely what, what you will get in many places that yeah. you go. Yeah. Right. And, and actually those are not, you would never say that's the wrong mic for someone. I would say the be beta the 58 mic. is, is, is the wrong mic for most environments, not necessarily most people, but for most environment, it's terrible in a, in a environment that's reflective and might have feedback. That's my experience. Oh, I would never, never choose one of those indoors. Never. Fair enough. Yeah. That's just me. I'm an opinionated <laughs> jackass sometimes. So, you know. <laughs> uh, we have more to talk about. I actually saw some live music indoors, which I want to tell you all about. But the next thing that I want to do is talk about our sponsor, if that works for you, Mr. Kent. I would love to hear about this new sponsor. All right. Yeah. Our sponsor today is Upstart at upstart.com slash gig Look, are you carrying a credit card balance every month? Because uh, if so, you're not the only one. And maybe you're looking at a purchase of a new instrument or maybe a new mixer or something and trying to balance that against your credit card. And how are you going to finance this? Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan, and they do it all online. So whether it's paying off your credit cards, consolidating other high-interest debt, or funding personal expenses... Over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment. Unlike other lenders, Upstart looks at more than your credit score. And this is the cool part, the coolest part, perhaps, about Upstart. So they, they look at things like your income and your employment history. And that means they can offer smarter rates with trusted partners. And their online system is super easy. I went and did it this morning, right? And with a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans between $1,000 and $50,000. And when you do that, they'll tell you this all over the website, they do not do a hard pull on your credit. So it does not affect your credit rating when you get the rate check. Obviously, if you move forward with a loan, then they would need to do that as they always would. But just to check your rates, no problem. And so you can find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash giggab. That's upstart.com slash giggab, G-I-G-G-A-B. Don't forget to use our URL. That way you let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, your income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. One more time, that's upstart.com slash giggab. And our thanks to Upstart for doing what they do and for sponsoring the show today. All right, man. Dirt. Yeah, it's cool. I know. It's really cool. Um, so I saw live music indoors. Now, I should preface this by saying uh, that I am fully vaccinated, as is my wife who went, who was with me at the time. I don't think I would have felt comfortable doing this uh, otherwise. Uh, but we were out in Portland, Oregon last week, uh, moving our son out of his dorm room, his school 
uh, they're they're finishing the semester. Uh, this was part of the plan. They had a good path in in uh, the fall semester. They sent everybody home after Thanksgiving, so they basically replicated the same thing here. They pushed spring break back a month and then send everybody home, and they'll finish the semester at home. And then hopefully next fall things are you know far less like this. But uh, but so we went to move him out of his dorm room and figured, well, if we're gonna have to travel anyway, we should spend some time out there and and hang. And one night we were looking and thinking, oh, there's got, there's no way there's any live music happening, right? Like there's just in downtown not, Portland. This was in downtown Portland, which is, they are much further behind. I'll say, I'm not sure if behind is the right word, but um, in terms of opening things, they are, they have, they were in lockdown much longer than we were here in New Hampshire. Like I think only until maybe a month ago, maybe three weeks ago. Uh, indoor dining was out, out of the question there and, and, and all of that. So we really didn't think that there would be indoor music, but, uh, but we found this one club called the Jack London review, which is this, um, it, I mean, it, it's a perfect little dive, uh, underneath a bar in downtown Portland. And, uh, and there was, there was a, uh, a show. They were doing two shows a night. Uh, Thursday. Wait a second. So you go actually ahead. not only did you go inside, you went down into a basement where there's even less. Correct. Air. Okay. Yes. So yeah. In for a dime, in for a dollar. In basically. for a dime, okay. in for a dollar. That's kind of how we felt. That, that was. <laughs> it, it, but but yes, like I like I said, if we were not, you know, more than two weeks past our fully vaccinated point, I do not think either one of us would have felt comfortable in there. And even going, and it was all socially distanced. We had to reserve. Uh, you know, a, a table. Um, it, it wasn't a signed table. So it was in order of when you got like we made the reservation. And then when when you get there, you pick your table. We got there at, at I think doors opened at five o'clock. There were two shows that night, a six o'clock and a nine o'clock. And uh, the nine o'clock had been sold out probably for weeks or something. Somehow the six o'clock was not sold out the day before when we looked. And so we took that and we're like, you know what? That's fine. So we, we made dinner for, we made a dinner reservation, I think for eight 30 near our house that we had Airbnb and, uh, and we had some appetizers and some drinks at the club while we watched the music, but we were the first people there at five 30. So we got to, uh, we picked the table right up front. We started looking like, oh, should we be further back? I'm like, you know what? If we're in, like you said, in for a time, <laughs> in for a dollar, we're doing it. So we sat, uh, right in the front, but the tables were all socially distanced, uh, you know, from one another. Again, the ventilation in there was probably not uh, uh, up to what I would normally consider code or or what would like I, they didn't say anything about whether or not they had HEPA filters. And I did not ask, uh, but it, it felt relatively safe in there. I mean, people were keeping their distance from from each other. And um, and, you know, and it was what the nice part was, even though it was a six o'clock show and, you know, the sun was still shining bright outside. Because it was a you know, basement bar, there was no outside light, so it felt like a late night show, which was great. Mm -hmm. And uh, the band that was chosen for us was Ron Artist the Second, A R T I S, and it was a well. The band is a trio, except they then brought a sax player and a trumpet player on stage. It was guitar, bass, and drums, and it was. <sighs> Kind of like watching, it was a blues rock trio. It reminded me a lot of the Murray Woods band that I played in, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of thing, but with like a healthy, healthy dose of gospel. And, mm -hmm. uh, and Ron Artis, he's a fantastic guitar player, amazing soloist and rhythm player. Like really like that. Th that's why Stevie Ray Vaughan comes to mind. Like he just really had that ability to just groove and, and, uh, and yet, and also solo, like, like a maniac. Um, but, uh, and the band played really well together. They tore it up and he's got this really rich, soulful voice and, and like great range. And it was, it was such a pleasure, not just to see live music, but to see really, really good live music. That's cool. Yeah. And they were, they were, the band was super tight. Obviously they were very happy to be playing. I think that we were there on a Friday night. I think that Thursday night was the club's first shows back after lockdown. Um, and, and they said that the show we were at was the only show that had not sold out um, for uh, like for their entire summer ske schedule. So the gods definitely shined upon Lisa and I the night before, you know, we had a couple of options. We found one, two, two of them were outdoor options. And then there was this one. One was like, I don't know. It was some, I don't know, like like 80s 
cover band that you drive in and go see at some amusement park parking lot. And it was like, eh, if that's our only choice, okay. You know, and then there was something else too. And it was like, no, let's go see this guy. And it's all, all original music, fantastic musicians and like really just poured it out on the stage. I, that's cool. Oh man. It was so good. <laughs> a, a, a flashback to the before times, it, you know, <laughs> it totally was. I mean, it normally this club, there were probably, I mean, maybe let's say 40 people in there, whereas normally there'd probably be 300 people in there. Um, right. It, you know, and, and obviously everybody was distanced at their tables. A few people got up and were dancing kind of, you know, at their chairs, which seemed fine. It, you know, like I, we, like I said, we were in the front, but at one point I turned around, and I was like, oh, look at that. Like people are up and grooving and <laughs> like having fun. And, but nobody was being, n nobody did anything that was like, obviously irresponsible other than if you would consider being in that place irresponsible. Well, then we all did that. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty amazing. And Oregon is, or was further behind us here in New Hampshire in terms of the pace of vaccinations too. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. the whole country here in the U S now is everybody 16 plus is eligible everywhere, but that, um, that didn't start until what today, I guess the 19th. So so yeah, here that, too. Was, that was the country's way of saying happy bicycle day to everybody yeah. or, or something. So, yeah. Hey, you know what else happened today? What's that, man? 41 years ago, you and I are both REM fans. First time that uh, Bill, Peter, Mike, and Michael played under the name REM. Really? was April 19th, 1980. Really? 419? I don't, know why, I don't know why that comes to me, but I'm just sharing. Really? Do you know where that gig was? In Athens. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a small place, actually. <laughs> I would imagine so, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm looking um, at remtimeline.com. Coffee Club in Athens. Okay. The show was shut down by police at 2.30 a.m. after a 1.45 a.m. start due to the club's improper use of a business license. This is from REMHQ. Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking at remtimeline.com and it was, they say the April 18th and 19th, where the four of them decide on the name REM um, it, over uh, several others, including, it's 1980 folks, <laughs> Negro Eyes, Slut Bank, <laughs> Africans in Bondage, and Cans of Piss. I would say <laughs> they chose, like they dodged a huge bullet here. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with this. <laughs> you and I both love R REM and actually you, like I, I liked REM and then mm. your excitement for REM when you had us play that um, Hindu love God song mm. when we first started playing together, when we played Raspberry Beret. Yeah, the, the cover of the cover. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the yeah. cover of the cover. And, um, and then we started talking about REM and, you know, we tried to play bad day. Isn't that the one that we tried to do together? No, or, we, or begin we wound, the begin. We wound up doing begin the begin at one of the parties, one of the early uh, Cirque du Mac parties at at the park, which was that club on Third Street in downtown San Francisco, oh, right yeah, yeah. right across from the baseball park. There, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I think it was a oh, we did that, and that was a one and done uh, thing. But then years later at Broadway Studios as part of Cirque du Mac, we played Man on the Moon, and I think we yeah, did that I, quite well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, oh, so many good songs. I love yeah. REM. I'm, lo I'm looking at this gig. They're saying, uh, first gig under the name REM, uh, it's, it's taking place early on a Sunday morning. The band came on about one 45 and the show ended at two 30 when the band venue was being unlicensed. That's great. <laughs> uh, so that's at the coffee club, K A F F E E club in Athens, Georgia. And, uh, they say that they debuted the song just a touch there. So there you go. Um, Oh, Mr. wait a minute. So this venue was situated at 256 West Clayton Street, later the venue of the 40 Watt Club, which REM like fans might famous. know that name yeah. a little bit more. It's a little more famous. Yeah. Or really fans of Athens music in general might know that. Yeah. I wonder if, I wonder if the improper use of a business license is what led to the change of <laughs> ownership and name. You may not be wrong because <laughs> on May 30th, 1980, they played at the 40 Watt Club East. So I don't know if that's the same place, but that's a month later. Like it's not that long. <laughs> so. What's your favorite REM song to play? Oh, to play. Huh. That's really interesting. Um boy. Uh I I've of the songs I've played, and I haven't played all of them. 
Um, Sitting Still, I think, is a really well-written song, and I I always get emotional playing it. Um, mm. I, I mean, I you know, End of the World is fun to play because because I at you know back you in, are the only person on earth who besides them who can because I memorized the, the lyrics. Yeah, there was <laughs> there was some madhouse a number of years ago where they had like End of the End of the World as like the playout music, and they were going to play it over the PA. And I'm like, guys, why are we not? Why is the band not Play playing it. that song? And they're like, because nobody can know, learn the lyrics fast enough. And I was like, I got you. We're good. Like, nice. let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, that's, that's um, fun to play. We, you know, I played Orange Crush in in my in RTA, which was my high school band. I'm trying to think of what REM songs we played in Go Figure. We played Begin the Begin in Go Figure. Uh, we played. Uh, well, we played Superman, which is a cover, uh, a band called The Click originally did that. And and then we did Raspberry Beret in, in Go Figure 2, which is ov obviously a Prince song covered not by R.E.M., but by three-fourths of R.E.M. Two people of Three-fourths. Yeah. It was everybody except Michael Stipe plus oh. Warren Zevon. Yeah, it was yeah, it was it was all three of them, and Warren got together. I love that. Bad Day. That song just does it for me. I, ah, that's great. That is like the greatest outlet of being pissed off song that there is in the world for me. So that and song then the was other written side of it is like, at the same time as End of the World. In fact, if you listen to the early cuts of Bad Day, it starts with that same snare drum kind of biddly got biddly got biddly got biddly got bop. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's, and, and they, they shelved it when they released End of the World and then brought it back, you know, decade or decades later. So, yeah. I also love Electrolyte. I actually do that mm -hmm. in my acoustics. Mm. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've never played fall on me, but I would love, it's one of my favorite songs of all time. And uh, certainly one of my favorite REM songs. I would love to play that one. That's a, it's a, it's a, it's just a really so many well good ones. song. Yeah. They, yeah. they knew how, for me anyway, their songs communicated emotion in a way that the lyrics were almost irrelevant, which in, in many cases they were. Well, you saw when um, Eddie Vedder, um, uh, inducted them into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, he he inducted them, and he said, "Michael, I just got to ask you, what does it mean?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun band. I um, I'm glad I got to see them the few times that I did, and I'm especially glad I got to see them when they played at Stubbs at South by Southwest. It was a small crowd, sweaty night. They went on at midnight. It felt like a hometown show. Uh, and they just roared through their set. I mean, it was just great. Um, I mean, it, I say it felt like a hometown show. I never saw them in their hometown, but there were a lot of people that they clearly that they knew there, a lot of friends and stuff. And so it was just this really high energy night. Um, yeah, yeah. No, they they were they were something else. I I keep saying I don't think it'll happen, but I keep saying you know if anything were going to bring to convince them to reunite, it would be you know the end of pandemic and and all of that. I don't think they will. Even when they called it quits initially, I'm like, oh no, these are the guys that that will hold true to their word, even it you know to their own detriment because that's just who they are. Absolutely. You, you know what I mean? Like if they say they're doing something, like by golly, I'm gonna cut off my nose to spite my face. I'm doing it. And yeah. uh, I think they are those guys. But uh, but you know the hopeful part of me says that maybe maybe time softened that a little bit. I don't think so. Well, raise a glass to REM because they they are something special. They're Absolutely, yeah. Great music. Did you ever get to see them live? Never did, and yeah. tremendous tremendous regret about that. I had a chance once or twice, mm. and chose something else or, or something. Sure. But, yeah. You know, in hindsight, you know, you always think there's going to be another tour and a next time and a next chance, and yeah. then you kick yourself afterwards. But Absolutely. I love they they have. They have a pretty great bank of um, live shows that you know you can stream and you can watch that are that are yes. pretty freaking awesome. Yeah, they and they those videos a lot of them really do communicate, you know the the way they could Intense. pour energy off the stage. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know Stipe is just such an interesting quirky front man. Mills is such an ordinary guy, right? <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, just the dynamic of them is just, it's, you know, it's, it's Beatlesque magic. How yeah. they, you know, individually they might not have done it. Right. But the, the melding of the, of the minds made something greater than the sum of the parts. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. 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 I love them. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I agree. I, yep. I agree. All right. Do we, um, so that was an interesting little detour. Do we, um, do we have more to talk about today or are we saving it for, uh, 
for next week? I, I, I'm going to give you just a quick um, Reader's Digest version of my house rocker, get back to business. Yeah. Meeting, right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. You had that meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so uh, we, it, the meeting was uh, scheduled about uh, a month before. So everybody had time to know about it. Um, one guy immediately said, uh, that's a bad, and it was actually our second shot at a date. So again, trying to get 11 guys on the same page is always a, a thing, but yep, one guy couldn't make it. And so I met with that one guy who couldn't make it the night before and got his feedback. Actually, I created a, a, an agenda, you know, and let everybody know, here's what, here's what we're going to talk about. Sure. You know, look at this and come ready to talk about these things. Cause we're going to have about two hours and we got a lot of stuff to go, th- go through. One guy screwed up the time and was late, um, but uh, everybody else was there. And even the one guy who was late, you know, was fairly sheepish about it and, you know, kind of dove right in. And sure. the meeting That's was great. really yeah. good. I mean, everybody, you know, we are on the same page. We are ready to get back to work That's and, great. and play. Yeah. Um, you know, the first question was, is everybody, where are you? Where's everybody with the vaxes? Yep. Where's everybody with your head ready to get into a room and rehearse? Um, and we have a tentative rehearsal date in the in middle of May, you know, put on yep. the calendar. Where was everybody going to be with regards to vax and in your headspace to, for that date? And we were good in the line for that. Yeah. One guy said, you know, I, I my preference, well, I will be vax, but my preference would be is that we rehearse someplace that has a little bit more circulation than, you know, the garage that we, that we in. And, and I, I'm not able to make that work as of right now. And I went back to the guy and he said, I, you know, I'll deal with it. So, you know, we'll all be vaxed. We'll all be ready to go. Yep. Um, the one message I sent to the guys was the expectation, you know, the gig is in two months. We have two rehearsals in May. We have two rehearsals in June. One of them may be a kind of a open rehearsal for friends and families to attend. Ah. The deal is you you guys have to do, we all have to do our homework and come ready to play. We are not coming to relearn, spot check, you know, you know, ask people for clarification about how a certain part goes. You have a month to get that done now. And I, you know, they should listen the guys, to that David Jameson interview we did with uh, yeah. 299 where he discussed exactly yep. that. Like, yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. And, you know, I, I shared a, a, a audio files of a, of a, one of the more recent shows that we had done. Smart. If anyone needs something to reference to, I I gave them the exact list, like on the rehearsal one, we're going to do these 10 songs and we're going to do them two or three times. And then on rehearsal two, we're going to do these 10 songs plus anything that, you know, needed a little bit more time from the first rehearsal and rehearsal three, these 10 songs. And then rehearsal four, we're going to play the whole show. Yeah. And so there's a really finite plan with a lot of time in between. And, you know, we were not a band where the culture was really heavy on, on, uh, accountability to to come to a, a rehearsal. I got you. The preparation. You would come to rehearsal. You would come to rehearsal. Not be the one guy to stick out that you knew it the least of everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like <laughs> n- nobody would walk in cold, but the number of people who would walk in like ready to perform a song on their own. Everybody kind of assumes that someone else is going to be a little weaker than them, and so that they you kind of have that built in buffer, right? Yeah, right. So the expectation was we do not have that time. A, we're paying for um, rehearsal space. B, um, my time up in Northern California to do these things with you is finite. We have to be efficient right. and productive with the rehearsals. Everybody nodded their head. Everybody nodded their head that this June 25th gig, which is going to be an outdoor gig at a at a good popular place of ours um, that we've played for years. And I have no idea how he's going to handle the crowd control. He's not taking reservations. Mm. Um it, you know, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to stay in touch with him so I can stay in touch with our fans and let them know what to expect. But we have people taking hotel rooms. Oh, wow. We have people, you know, ready to come in the middle of the day and save a table for themselves. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I yeah, told yeah. the guy, you're going to have a lot of people. We haven't played for a long time. I'll, I'll say one thing. The, the beginning of the meeting was actually the most emotional because you realize, like, you haven't seen these people in a year. Right. A year. Right. A year of your life has passed. And these people who you spend so much time with that you collaborate creatively with a year of your life, of your friendship, of your connection has kind of been taken away from you. Oh, so absolutely. It's a, the first 30 minutes was, a, you know, just catching up on people's families and how everybody's doing. And that was probably the most valuable part of the whole thing. I mean, I could have sent a, I could have sent an email with the rest of it, right? Sure. It was nice to see everybody, but to reestablish those bonds and connections and, you know, r- recognize that, um, um, you know, this thing that we're about to do is important. Yeah. And actually, that kind of brings me to my last point was my my one mantra, my one preachy part to the guys was this. I I didn't want anyone to think, 
you know, we're going to ease back into this and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of get there. The first couple of shows will be rough or whatever it is. I wanted people to kind of like be really, really hard on themselves to get their best because our first show back. And, and actually what I said to the guys is we are about to play for people who've been locked in their house for more or less a year. People need what we do and want what we do and appreciate what we do. Sure. We should be ready to give them everything we can possibly give them on day one. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, so that, that was kind of like the, the, you know, emotional marching orders to the guys. And, and I felt very gratified that, you know, it, and I shouldn't be surprised, but I felt very gratified that everybody was, yes, we have got to go out. We've got to kill it from day one. And so I think we're in a good place. So now it's going back and relearning the songs, a nice opportunity to fix some of the th- things that I had kind of settled into, you know, you always have those parts where, you know, there's a different part or a better part, but you kind of know this already. So in your choice of what to spend your time on buffing something that kind of works versus, versus going on to something new, usually, you know, we'll go on to something new, right? but you know, like, right. like, like learning the actual licks in some of these things, you know, that I kind of, you know, was like had a good enough, but not perfect. Yeah. Faking but, your way through no, it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 So House Rockers are back June 25th in Pleasanton, California. That's exciting, man. That's yeah. great. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, we've got, um, well, I'll talk about it next week, but we've got a full summer lined up with Bitter Pill and a couple of monkey fist gigs peppered in there and all that good stuff. So yeah. Sounds like 300 more episodes of stuff to talk about. I think we're going to, we're going to have maybe even <laughs> more than that. So yeah, there you go. Folks, thank you so much for listening. Thanks for 300 episodes. And whatever part of that you've been with us for is is amazing. Thank you. Uh, never forget that we are always here. We'd love to hear from you. Please, feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Even if it's just to say, hey, thanks. Hey, I like the show. Or, hey, I'm you know sitting at home and I don't know what to do. So I wanted to email you guys. Like Any of that is fine. Of course, if you have questions for us or gear that you're using to recommend, please send it along. We'd love to hear from you. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. That's what I got for today. You got anything else, man? No, this is a good one. Thanks for 300 great episodes, Dave. Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. And uh, I'm looking forward to more. It's great. What is that thing? Hey, we do? how about this? Yeah, man. Oh, wait, how about, uh, wait, uh, 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 always be performing. That's it. <laughs>